41 Action News starts right now. These guys are the best team ever. It's unbelievable what they did. This is all for you. Thank you so much. Kansas City's the greatest town in the world. They've got the best fans in the world, and now you have the best team in the world. Tonight, a city recovering from one of the biggest parties in the state's history. We are talking an estimated 800,000 Royals fans invaded downtown for a party many have been waiting 30 years for. We have live team coverage tonight. We want to begin with Brian Abel, who looked into that big traffic mess after the rally. Brian. Yeah, extreme jubilation to intense frustration right here as many riders waited for four hours to try to catch a ride home from the rally. An estimated 800,000 strong royal celebration. About a quarter of those took advantage of free bus shuttles to get to Union Station. We took the bus thinking it was going to be the easy way out <laughs> and in. Fans from across the metro arrived throughout the morning, but once the victory rally ended, they all left at once, leaving traffic in gridlock Women and, children first. and many of the buses trying to get fans out at a standstill. There is no organization. You ask someone and they say that the bus is loading down here, but actually the buses are loading up there. You just don't know where to stand. Some were left waiting for a ride for well over four hours. Near, near 2,000 people. I mean, almost everyone here that's left is going to Strang Line. And 45 per bus. I mean, it could be 3, 4 a.m. before we're out of here. The Transportation Authority says all of its 256 buses were dedicated to the shuttle service and all rides were completed by 6 p.m. Still, some riders say it could have been better organized. This is a major failure. They didn't learn two days ago they were going to be in the World Series. They learned last year they were going to be in the World Series. And all of this happened with all of the metro, all the cities, 256 buses, as well as an additional 165 buses helping the effort. Reporting live downtown, Brian Abel, 41 Action News. All right, Brian, thank you. Right now, the vehicles left the many fans on the side of the medians and on the side of I-35 gone. Earlier, dozens of fans became frustrated with traffic near Southwest Traffic Way, so they pulled over, parked, and then walked the rest of the way. We found a group from Wellsville, Kansas, who said say two hours into the trip that should have taken about 45 minutes and they finally gave up and parked along the highway. We couldn't sit in the car any longer. Yeah. This is the way to someone up. We couldn't sit in the car any longer. We had to get out. Yeah. And now there were no reports of any injuries from people walking along the highway. Some good news there. The celebration today shattered ridership records on the KCATA. Late today, the organization said nearly 200,000 people rode the free shuttles and regular routes. To compare, on a normal day, 54,000 people ride city buses. All of the buses were used today, including extra school buses and even ones from Johnson County. Well, despite hundreds of thousands of people downtown today, tonight police report few problems. This is something we can all be proud of. In fact, there were only three arrests. Police and other emergency agencies watched the parade, the rally, and everyone in attendance, all 800,000 of us, from the Emergency Operations Center. Besides the traffic problems, though, they say everything else ran smoothly. Well, with the celebration tonight, the focus is turning to the mess that was left behind with all 800,000 people there. <laughs> Big cleanup to do and new tonight. 41 Action News reporter Dia Wall found out just how these crews are planning to clean up the mess. Dia. Yeah, guys, crews are going to be here overnight into the early morning, and this is why. I mean, there's bottles, bags, takeout containers, you name it. But the most interesting thing, lawn chairs. Who leaves those behind? So this is what crews are going to be stuck picking up until the early morning after that World Series championship celebration. It was a party for the ages by day that left trash for days by night. All right, now the big work begins. Public Works, Water Services, and the Parks Department all pitching in to get KC clean once again. We knew that was part of the deal to host a party like this, and we're happy to do it. So it's not that unusual to have this much trash left behind. I think that people need to remember that this was a couple hundred thousand of people converging on a city at one time to take in this, you know, once-in-a-lifetime experience. Organizers say 
they were prepared. Early this morning, workers lined more than 250 trash cans along the entire parade route. But when you have that many people, some people probably couldn't even get to the trash cans. Many leaving strange items on the lawn at Union Station. A lot of lawn chairs, coolers, uh, backpacks, hats, blankets. Now it's headed to the landfill with the rest of the trash as crews continue their hard work clearing it all out. Great occasion. Um, you know, we're world champions, and so uh, we want to bring our world champions home and, and celebrate with them. And now we're going to, we got to be a world class city and keep it clean. All of the workers we met tonight say this is one party they do not mind cleaning up after, but there's still a lot of work to be done. I don't know how much you can see behind me, but the entire lawn is covered with trash. They say they're waiting for some daylight so they can pick all that up. So just something to keep in mind. Hey, the next time you're out, somebody has to come and clean all this up. So the fun thing is they're going to weigh everything tomorrow morning once the landfill opens to find out just how much trash they had to clear out. Live at Union Station, Dia Wall, 41 Action News. Oh, man, I'm not sure if we want to know that number. <laughs> exactly. Well, after today's massive celebration, an estimated 200,000 students out of school today are expected to return to class tomorrow. And despite all the excitement today, we actually found one kid who says he would rather have gone to class. I don't think it was worth it. We came down here, waited two and a half hours to get on a bus, uh, rode the bus down, walked around see the parade, saw nothing at the parade, basically. Um, so you'd rather have gone to school? Yes, I would rather have gone to school. Hmm, but there were a thousand other kids who were excited for the day off today and for the opportunity to travel downtown for the royal <laughs> celebration. And of course, <laughs> none of these kids were around for the last time the royals won it. Some of their parents weren't even there. I think it's pretty cool that they haven't won in 30 years and that they won yeah, last year and won another year. So I hope they can go next year, too. So we planned everything last night. We planned that we were going to do our face paint. We laid out all of our clothes. It was super exciting. Let's all hope we don't have to wait 30 more years. Many parents say they wanted their kids to witness history today in Kansas City. That's just what they did. And it was the perfect day for the royal celebration. Not a cloud in the sky. It is November, my friends. And Gary, what was the high today? I know it was in the 70s. It felt fantastic. I know it was hot for you, but it was 70 degrees. That's all it was for you. <laughs> it was really nice. And the sign of might have felt a little warmer than that. Hey, the kids got a snow day. Is there going to be any snow days this winter? We'll talk about that here in the next few weeks. Look at this beautiful shot on the plaza. Here is a time lapse of all the people flowing into uh, the parade route. We'll put this into motion and show you that in here in a few minutes. But the Power Light District is finally calming down on this Tuesday night championship. There you go, the Kansas City Royals, the world champions. Beautiful shot of downtown Kansas City on this Tuesday night. 59 degrees is our current temperature. South winds at 13. New data is in. What is going to happen over the next few days? Chance of rain shows up, and I'll show that to you here in a few minutes. All right, Gary, thanks. The players may have had the best view of the Royal celebration. This picture shows the massive crowd from the stage. Royals pitcher Jeremy Guthrie tweeted this image of the crowd and the World Series trophy right as broadcaster Ryan LaFever welcomed everyone to the rally. Just a terrific shot there. While many fans struggled to get close to the action today, here's what Eric Hosmer saw during the parade. Our own Casey McDonald took that picture. Uh, a video from the truck Haas rode in today. Thousands of fans cheering him as he rode by during the Royals parade. In World Series, MVP Salvador Perez had a great day. I think he, every day has a great yes. day. He documented the parade and the rally on his Instagram. He took this video of the players waiting for the rally to begin. Then during the celebration, he took this video of that crowd right outside as Lorenzo Cain started to speak. We saw that on stage. That's a cool view. It's a very cool view. He may be one of the happiest people in the world, which is why we love him so much. Well, pitcher Danny Duffy even had a surprise for fans along the parade route. Yes, at one point he jumped out of his truck near 16th and Grand and then high-fived lots of fans there. And then a few minutes later, pitcher Luke Hochevar did the same thing. He ran across the street and greeted fans as well. I think this parade was ecstatic, exciting, and well worth it. It was well deserved by Kansas City. 
I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, during the rally, one by one, the players took the mic and thanked the fans, thanked the thousands of fans. It was such a cool moment. 41 Action News Sports anchor D Jackson joins us now. And D, I know you were along the parade route. What a scene out there. Oh my goodness, it was fabulous out there. You know, this week's gonna go down as one of the best in history, one of the most memorable times in Kansas City for several reasons. The Royals team overcame so much to get to this point. Injuries to the pitching staff, losing both Jason Vargas and Greg Holland with Tommy John surgery. Three players losing a parent during the course of the season. It stretched his team to the max, physically and mentally. But they leaned on each other as the fans rallied behind them. And this morning, the players had a chance to show their appreciation. Players thank all the loyal Royal fans for their support throughout the season. From all of us, we thank you guys so much for the atmosphere, the energy that you brought us. You know, those re there's a reason why we had all those comebacks, especially at home. Whenever we hear you guys get up and get loud, it sparks up the whole entire team, and we can't thank you enough. And we're all just glad that the trophy's right where it belongs here in Kansas City. All my team is in here. I know everybody's so happy to be here, too. The only thing I want to say, thank you to everybody, and let's go, Roya. Let's go and do it again. Coming up in sports, hear from Skipper Ned Yost on what's made this team so successful throughout the ranks, guys. Well, from KC to DC, the Royal shout out from the White House. Also brewing up some Royal Suds, what's on tap from Boulevard to help fans celebrate. And look at this, that's snow in Lake Tahoe. Is winter coming? Our forecast coming up. Looks nice and look at this a new view of the parade tonight viewer Griffin Davis sent us this video he took with a drone it flies right down Grand right outside the Sprint Center and you can see the thousands of Royals fans lining the streets just a terrific look at today's celebration and that massive parade and rally was 30 years in the making and it really did live up to all the hype it did and if you weren't able to make it don't worry we are going to show you because 41 action news photographer John Woods he takes us through all of the sights and sounds of this royal celebration it's very very exciting I'm with my entire family who is absolutely thrilled and this is great to be in Kansas City today Kansas City's the greatest town in the world. They've got the best fans in the world, and now you have the best team in the world. Thank you for all your support. We love you. And we wow. love our Royals. And take a look at this picture. Pause what you were doing. This is unbelievable. It's a new picture we've gotten in of the rally. Roy Inman took this picture from the top of Union Station. Unbelievable. You can see the hundreds of thousands of people at Union Station, on the streets, and yes, at the Liberty Memorial. Unbelievable. This looks fake almost, mm -hmm. you know? It's just incredible. So many people out there with us all, including a young girl I talked to. She was so excited to be at the rally and is really getting used to the Royals winning. Well, I think it's pretty normal for the Royals to win because they always win, right? <laughs> Especially in your lifetime, yes, for sure. Yep. And I've never been here, I told you, so it's pretty exciting for me. And that's only a brief <laughs> snippet of what she discussed with us. Sienna took control and then even interviewed her parents, and she had a fantastic time doing it. And her parents, you know, they, they've got a performer on their hands. Uh, they do. You Stole watch out for Sienna, let me tell you. <laughs> Sienna was with us all day today, and she is just fantastic. And with thousands of kids off of school today, parents who had to work had to scramble to find a place to take them. So today we went and visited a packed Kansas City daycare. They normally care for just pre-K kids during the school day, but today the classrooms were filled with elementary kids. 
It's a really stressful time because some businesses were not closed and parents didn't know what they were going to do. Spectrum Station says as soon as schools started to close, they alerted parents to make sure they knew that the daycare would be open today. With all the celebrating, getting kind of thirsty. And how about this? To honor the Royals World Series title, Boulevard is bringing back a special brew. The company will soon make its Crown Town Ale. The company originally released it after last year's World Series. Because of the brewing schedules already in place, Boulevard doesn't expect to get it on the shelves until next month, but look out for it. I know you will. Hint, well, the hint. Royals shout out today from the White House. Listen to the first comments today from the press briefing uh, from Press Secretary Josh Ernest, who's also a Kansas Typically native. Typically, I'll uh, fill my cup with water today. It's filled with the sweet nectar of a World Series championship. <laughs> so. You see me savoring it today, you'll know why. <laughs> Savor away. And guess what? Tomorrow night, Salvador Perez and Eric Hosmer, they will be on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. They're headed back to New York because they will tape that tomorrow afternoon. The duo will be on the show tomorrow night right after 41 Action News at 10. That's going to be hilarious to see Haas Salvi. Game face on there. Well, Salvi and Fallon. It's going to be great. They that could be a new comedy with... duo. We'll see. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to it all, and we're sharing them uh, you know, with the nation. By the way, if you want to check out our coverage online. We've got the 41 mm -hmm. Action News app. We've got the parade on there as well of a photo gallery of all the great photos that were taken today and some of the best moments. It's just uh, tremendous Incredible. to relive, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Jimmy Fallon tomorrow night. I can't wait for that to see well, them Well, you know how funny Salvi is. I know. Well, if you could understand what he says. So, but, uh, <laughs> but that's the greatest part. People just cheer because it's Salvi, you know. know. It's true. It's, it's incredible. Uh, good evening, everyone. It was 28 days ago when the playoffs began. It's been four weeks of craziness for us. We where we get to enjoy the championship at the end. Uh, I think we're all a little wiped out. Now let's take a look at our weather situation and see what's happening. We can see it is absolutely a gorgeous Tuesday night in November. Uh, the temperature is currently 59 degrees. Here's a time lapse of the last, oh, about six hour period from 10 in the morning when the sun started coming out, the beautiful fall foliage. You can see all the people walking towards the parade route. Some people walked many miles today, so you got some good cardio in, lost a little weight, I'm sure. So uh, there's all the crowd. And then here is everyone trying to leave. And it was certainly a battle for some of you to get back home. So uh, pretty fascinating for our one park place luxury condominium Skyview. Paralyte District finally winding down. It is two Tuesday night. It's not Friday night in the big town. We have to get to work tomorrow, get to school tomorrow, and get back to our lives. But what a championship ride we just went on as you look at the Marriott Hotel out there right now. 59 degrees right now. We do have a wind out of the south at 13 miles per hour. The dew point is 55 degrees. So once again, that dew point spread we talked about it last night is probably going to result in cloud cover developing again by morning. And it may be tougher to clear tomorrow. So it may be about 69 or 70 degrees for tomorrow's high temperature just like today with the clock here. Here's the clouds we had this morning. They actually formed right on the state line and now they're gone. But notice there's moisture around. So as we get towards the early morning hours, I'm expecting low clouds again to fill in and it'll be a little while. A little bit of sun should break out tomorrow afternoon. There's a storm that's spinning over California and Nevada and that storm system produced this in Lake Tahoe. Last year, last few years, an extreme drought. The snowpack has been so low, the ski areas will be opening up in the Lake Tahoe area tomorrow after two feet of snow. No sign of any snow for us, just some rain from that storm coming our way, and probably not a lot of it. We gotta watch it closely, but about a quarter of an inch of rain. If thunderstorms form, it could be more than this. But right now, that's uh, iffy at this moment. That would be for during the day Thursday or into Thursday night. We bring you that most accurate forecast and we missed by two today. We forecasted 72, it was 70. So Paul Santolaric from Shawnee, Kansas, you're at the running to win the $1,000 Visa gift card from Peer Masters at the end of the month. Tomorrow, once again, a high temperature 69 or 70. I just changed the forecast to 69 degrees for tomorrow's high temperature because of the cloud cover. 68 degrees Thursday, 61 degrees Friday, 54 Saturday. The nice mild November weather continues as you can see there. Enter our snowflake contest. When are we going to have our first inch of snow? No sign of it yet. Go to kshb.com slash snowflake to enter. And here's a picture from early this morning. Breezy and sunny in the fog and low clouds. Look at Sunny getting all grown They sit up. so nicely for pictures. Can you teach my dog to Yeah, do well, I taught them how to pose. It's something <laughs> okay, I can teach a dog. Nice. I can, can you teach my son? Um, he will not sit still either. <laughs> I'll start working on your son do. later.
Uh, speaking of a man who's been working a lot, yeah. D. Jackson right here. Welcome what about back. Today? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm thinking about young pups, and that's exactly what Ned Yost <laughs> thinks of these guys. He's trained them up well, putting a bow on what will go down as one of the biggest days ever in Kansas City. What did uh, what this year's world champions, how they got here? Let's talk about that next sports. Well, good evening to you. Tuesday marked a record setting day in Kansas City as people came from everywhere to support these Kansas City Royals. This morning's parade showed just how close this team really is and not just with one another, but with the fans as well. Many say this is the best Royals team ever assembled. A core group of talent brought up together through the minor leagues with just the right touch of free agent acquisitions. It gave this year's team just the right amount of chemistry to finally take the crown. This group grew up together. This group won championships in double A. This group won championships in triple A. And what they wanted most was to come to this city for you fans and win a world championship for you guys. We celebrate that here today. Kansas City's the greatest town in the world. They've got the best fans in the world. And now you have the best team in the world. You know, I've been here since 2007. I've been through the bad times. And to see it unfold to this is just truly unbelievable. We're World Series champs, and you guys are the best fans in the world. Every time we come in a game late in the game, y'all are there for us, yelling, getting louder as the game's getting more intense. And it's 100% the reason we had success this year is because of all y'all. 100%. I appreciate everything. Congratulations once again. You know, the clock is ticking down to the start of college basketball, and the fourth-ranked Kansas Jayhawks are set to begin their exhibition season on Wednesday, hosting Pittsburgh State. And it looks like KU fans will have to wait just a little bit longer to get a view of five-star recruit Czech Diallo. Diallo has yet to be cleared to play by the NCAA, and as they continue to check his transcripts and other paperwork, he's continuing to get ready. However, he's been allowed to practice and Coach Self hopes to have it all cleared up before the November opener against Northern Colorado November 13th. Also, Wayne Selden is nursing an ankle injury, still not 100% sure of when he will be back at full speed, but the Jayhawks still have 10 days before hitting the court when it counts for real. Um, you know, those are the things that, I, that I'd like to see as much as anything else. We're going to throw it all over the gym. We'll turn it over. We'll, we'll, we'll not miss blockouts. We'll do all that stuff just like just like they will also. I mean, it's, it's so early. Uh, and it's hard to if, be great at everything. I mean, we, we're talking today of, okay, in the next two weeks, we got to get this in. And hell, it'll take a month to get in what we talked about getting in, in the next two weeks, you know, just before we're prepared to really play a, a game that matters. And KU, I'm sure, will do okay. That's going to do it for you. Look at Sports More News in just a moment. Okay, now that we're all going to have a Royals hangover tomorrow, how's the weather? <laughs> already having one. Yeah, I know. It has been quite a ride, guys. Let's take a look. Uh, it's 69 degrees tomorrow, 68 degrees on Thursday, 61 on Friday, a little cooler this weekend. Tomorrow night at this time, it's going to be so exciting because just a few minutes from now, on Jimmy Fallon, mm -hmm. who's going to be on? Yeah, Salvi and MVP. Haas. You know what I was thinking about this, too? You know who the Royals open up the season with and who where they're going to get their rings? The New York Mets. I know. What are the odds of that? <laughs> I mean, that's going to feel pretty a good. Salt in the wound for them, but we're going to uh, have to win that first game. Yeah, of Thanks course. for joining us, everyone. Have a great night.